Welcome to Faith and Wellness. And together we continue with this wonderful meditations from In Conversations with God. The Messiah, Prince of Peace. Peace, a gift of God. It is lost through sin, pride, and insincerity. Peace is one of the great goods constantly implored from God in the Old Testament. It is, the, it is this gift that is promised to the people of Israel as a reward for their fidelity, and it is seen as a work of God from which flow uncountable benefits. A real peace came to the world only with the coming of the Messiah. That is why at the Nativity of our Lord, the angels proclaim it, singing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men of good will. Advent and Christmas or especially op opportune times for the growth of peace in our hearts. They are also times to pray for peace in the world, torn as it is by conflict and widespread dissension. Behold, the Lord is coming in power to bring peace to his people and give the eternal life. Isaiah reminds us in the first reading of the, of the Mass that it is in the Messianic era, the wolf shall live peacefully with the lamb and the leper lie down with the kid and the calf and the lion and the beast of the field dwell together with the messiah's coming the peace and harmony the world knew at the beginning of creation or restore in a new order is inaugurated the lord is the prince of peace and from very mo and from that very moment of his birth He brings us messages of peace and joy, the only true peace and the only real joy, which later he will sow wherever he goes. Peace be with you. It is I, do not be afraid. The presence of, the presence of Christ in our lives is always the source of calm and indestructible peace. It is I, do not be afraid, he tells us. The teaching of our Lord constitutes the good news of peace. And this same peace is also the treasure he has passed on to his disciples in every age. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, it do I give it you. Earthly peace which comes from love of our fellow man is a type of and a result of the peace of Christ issuing from God the Father, the incarnate Son himself, the Prince of Peace, reconcile all men to God through his cross in his own flesh. He killed hatred, and after, had, after he had risen, he poured out the spirit of charity into the hearts of men. The peace of God completely transcends an earthly peace, which can so easily be superficial and unreal, esteeming often from selfish and not all incompatible with injustice. Christ is our peace and our joy. Sin, on the other hand, sows nothing but loneliness, anxiety, and sadness in the soul. Christian peace, so necessary for, apost um, for ap apostolate, and good fellowship is the product of interior order of a conspicuous conspicuousness of our own failings and virtues of unfailing respect for others and a complete confidence in God who we know will never abandon us it is the consequences the consequence of humility of awareness, of our divine filiation, of the struggle against our own passions, which tends always towards disorder 
and disruption. We lose our peace through sin, through pride, and by not being sincere with ourselves and with God. Peace can also be lost through impatience when we are unable to see the providential hand of God in times of difficulty and contradictions. The sincere confession of our sins is one of the main ways God has given us to recover the peace that has been lost through sin or by the failure to correspond with His grace. Peace with God, the result of justification and the rejection of sin. Peace with our fellow men, the fruit of love dispersed by the Holy Spirit. Peace with ourselves, the peace of conscience proceeding from victory over our own passions and over evil. The recovery of peace, if it has been lost, is one of the best signs of love for those around us. In its acquisition also, the first task in preparing our hearts for the coming of the infant Christ. True peace gives joy and serenity to those who lack them. In the beatitude in which he proclaims the gift of peace, our Lord is not merely seeking to do away with all kinds of controversy and enmity between men. He is asking more of us that we try to bring peace no less to those who hate us. The Christian is a man open to peace, and his presence should spread tranquility and happiness, happiness, happiness around him. But we are talking about real peace, not about those false states that are substitutes for it. Blessed are we when we know how to bring peace to the afflicted when when we serve as instrument of unity in our families among our workmates and in all those we meet in the course of our daily lives to put this vitality important commitment into practice we have to be very humble and conciliatory for pride does not Does nothing but cause dissension. The man who carries peace in his heart knows how to communicate it almost unthinkably, and others look to him for support and for peace of mind. It is an enormous help in the apostolate we Christians have to spread the interior peace we have in our hearts whether we find ourselves. Our Lord blesses in a special way those who pray for peace among nations and work with a right intention to obtain it. Above all, He blesses those who offer prayer and sacrifice in order to reconcile men with God. This is the first task in any kind of apostolic activity, the apostolate of confession, which moves us to bring our friends to this to this sacrament must deserve a special reward in heaven for it is surely the best source of peace and joy there is there it is there is in the world those confessionals scattered about the world where men declare their sins don't speak of the severity of god Rather, do they speak of mercy, and all those who approach the confessional, sometimes after many years, weigh down with moral sin in the moment of getting rid of this intolerable burden, find, alas, a long for relief. They find joy and tranquility of conscience, which outside confession they will never be able to find anywhere. Those who have the peace of God and pass it to those around them will be called the children of God. St. John, Saint John Chrysanthemum explained why. Truly, it has been the work of the only begotten one to unite those who were apart and to reconcile those who were at war with one another within our own family at our place of work. 
and among our friends. Cannot we too, in this time of Advent, impart a deeper sense of union with God among those around us in a still more loving and joyful fellowship? Divine affiliation, the foundation of our peace and of our joy. When a man forgets his eternal destiny and when the horizon of his life or limited by his earthly existence, he is content with a fictitious peace, with a mere outward appearance of tranquility. All that he asks is the illusion, the illusory security of a attaining the greatest possible material well-being with the least effort. In this way, he builds an imperfect and unstable peace, since it is not rooted in the dignity of the human person, a person made in the image and likeness of God and called to his divine sonship. You must never be content with these substitutes for peace, for their fruit produces the most bitter disillusionment. Jesus Christ emphasized this when he said to his disciples shortly before his ascension into heaven, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. And you find that in John 14, 27. There are thus two kinds of peace that which men can make for themselves alone, and that which is the gift of God, that which is imposed by force of arms, and that which is born in the heart. The former is fragile and insecure. It can be called a mere appearance of peace, for it is founded on fear and mistrust. The latter, on the contrary, is a strong and durable peace, in being founded in justice and love, it permeates the heart. It is a gift God gives to those who love his law. If we were men and women with true peace in our hearts, we will be the better able to live like children of God and will be better be able to live brotherhood with our fellow men. Also, Insofar as we realize that we are children of God, we will be men and women with lasting peace. Divine filiation is the foundation of Christian peace and joy. In it, we find the security we need, a fatherly warmth and trust for the future. We live in the assurance that behind all the disappointments of life, there is a good reason. In everything, God works for good with those who love him, says St. Paul to the first Christians in Rome. Considering our divine affiliation would help us to be strong in the face of difficulties. Don't be frightened. Don't fear any harm, even though the circumstances in which you work are terrible. God's hand is as powerful as ever, and if necessary, he will work miracles. We are well protected. Let us try then in these days of Advent to foster peace and joy, overcoming every obstacle. Let us learn to find God in everything, even in the most difficult situations. Seek his face, whoever dwells in real and bodily presence in his church. Do at least as much as the disciples did. They had a little faith. They feared they had no great confidence or peace, but at least they did not keep away from Christ. Do not keep from Him, but when you are in trouble, come to Him day by day, asking Him earnestly and, pers and persevere, and asking Him for those favors which He alone can give. So, though He discerns much, infirmity in you which ought not to be there, yet he will deign to rebuke the winds and the seas and say, Peace, be still, and there will be a great calm.
Mary, who is Queen of Peace, will help us to have peace in our hearts, to recover it if we have lost it, and pass it on to those around us. Since the Feast of the Immaculate Conception is fast appro approaching, we will do all we can to turn to her all day long, keeping her closer to us in our work and offering her some special token of affection. Well, thank you. May God bless you and share these beautiful reflections about the Prince of Peace, the Messiah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>